In this video, I'll show you how I made my own homemade limoncello. I've been to Italy many, many times, especially around the Amalfi Coast and Sicily, where limoncello is particularly prevalent. Anyone who's ever been to those areas will agree that it's hard not to fall in love with limoncello. It's something that is offered in basically every restaurant throughout most of Italy, but especially in the South. It traditionally is served at the end of a meal and usually is actually free. It usually comes in a frosty bottle and you can have as much as you want for free. Some places they charge for it, but often they don't. And I do actually think that often it's homemade. So I've heard that it's not that hard to make, so I wanted to give it a try. First step was to do some research to figure out how to do it, and it's remarkably easy. Well, it looks easy anyway. The more I researched, the more I came across different ways to do it. I don't know if it's partly regional differences. There's a lot of different approaches to it. The general concept is that you literally just take the peels of a lemon, you soak them in alcohol, and then you add a sugar syrup or sugary water to it. So we have managed to do it, but not without quite a few mistakes. And we've definitely learned a few little bits for the future. I definitely will be making it again. It was really easy and it tastes fantastic. But I'm not gonna hide my mistakes in this video. So I'm sharing how we made it and the mistakes that we made and what I would do differently next time because there will be a next time. It's just dependent on when we run out. So straight into our first mistake was using vodka for this, which was only 40% alcohol. And ideally you want to be using an alcohol that is 50%. The final product was still fine. You could do it with vodka if that's all you have, but it is recommended that you use a 50% alcohol if possible. So on to step two, which was also our second mistake. We thought we were being so clever because in all of the information we found, it was really clearly stated that you want to avoid getting as much of the white part of the lemon rind into the mixture because that would be bitter. And so we thought, well, if we grate it really finely, not only will we totally avoid having really any of that white stuff at all, but also it will increase the surface area and it will infuse better. And we just thought we were really clever, but it was just harder to collect and it didn't really work. So literally after one lemon, we quickly realized, yeah, there's a reason why these experts, these people who have been making limoncello for years and years say to peel it like this. So definitely just do what the experts say here. And this worked fine and it was just easier to manage for the rest of the process. Thicker slices of lemon rind were easier to manage when we were trying to remove it later on as well. So I think we were just trying to take it too literally. Like a small amount of the white part is fine. You just don't want too much of it and you want to minimize it as much as possible. But literally this approach worked perfectly for us. So step three was also our third mistake. I started to put the lemon peel into the bottles and totally didn't realize that this was just completely the wrong bottle shape. There's also a reason why all of the Italian people who make this are making it in jars with wide openings at the top because yeah, you can like one by one put the lemon peels in here, but it was so hard to take it out. So these bottles are really only for the final product, not for the soaking part of this project. So the next step is the part that takes the longest time, which literally just is pouring alcohol over these lemon peels and letting them soak. So in the spirit of the Mediterranean, we were able to get a donation from dad's pruning of the bougainvillea at the front of the house. You didn't have to ask him twice. He loves any occasion to prune a tree. They're so beautiful, and especially if you've seen them, beautiful, huge yep. bushes that can grow all over buildings and things in the Mediterranean. They just are so gorgeous. They're not actually that good as cut flowers. They don't really last long. It's not really what they're about, but you know, we were just embracing the vibe. So the next part is probably the only bit we didn't stuff up. We just used the vodka that we had in the cupboard and we decided that we wanted three bottles of limoncello. So we just split out the vodka evenly and that's the amount that we used. So there wasn't really much science to it. I thought that, you know, embrace the Italian carefree lifestyle and just go with it. Like how badly could we stuff it up? Next time I would do the full amount of vodka just in one wide open mouth jar. I've bought one to do next time and I'll leave a link in the description to the exact one that I'm going to be using. And I also have a link to 50% alcohol because sometimes that can be really hard to find. So we're up to step five, which 
also was a step that we didn't manage to stuff up and that's probably because it's the easiest step. <laughs> All you have to do is seal up the bottles or ideally jar because that's what you should use and give them a little bit of a shake and then leave them in the cupboard. The information online varies saying that you should leave them anywhere between three days and three weeks basically to infuse. We did it for two weeks, which I think worked out perfectly. So I'd probably do it for the same amount next time. So after one day of sitting in the pantry, they already had infused quite a lot. I was quite surprised at what we saw because the vodka was already like a golden yellow color. It was surprising that it had this effect so quickly. I thought it was going to be more of a gradual color change, but no. So this color that it was on day one is really the same color that it was on the day that we ended up bottling it. So after about two weeks, we were ready to move on to the next step. So to prepare for straining the limoncello mix, we first poured all of the mixture from the other bottles into one. So we ended up with Ooh. one bottle with no. all of the vodka infused okay. mixture in it. And it's fine that there were other bits of lemon peel and things coming through there because we were about to put it through a sieve to get all of the little bits and the big bits out and just have this infused vodka mixture. Now this was all good, but this is where I spent so much time having to shake out these lemon peels and individually pulling each one out. Here I am using a screwdriver. That's what seemed to work best. It was just such like a fail. It was just short-sighted. Like this is quite obvious that this was gonna happen, but I just wasn't really thinking when I decided to use these. So they say to use cheesecloth. I just used a piece of canvas fabric that we had and put it in the biggest funnel that we had and then slowly poured the lemon vodka mixture into it and it slowly drained through. Now the next step was the sugar mixture that needs to be added. I was skeptical about what option was best, either sugary water or sugar syrup. So we tried both. We firstly made a basic sugar syrup on the hob and I thought that this was gonna be best because limoncello tends to have a thick texture, but when we tested it, we made a little mixture and was trying to just test the flavor and see if it worked. It was just not good. We found that the mixture that we used with just sugary water was way better. So since I've done that experiment, I can speak with authority that this sugar water is way better. So it's just 250 grams of sugar to 750 mils of water. And we just stirred it in a jug until it was all fully dissolved and then it was ready. And when we made our little testers, it just tasted far more balanced and far more like limoncello. So after separating out into the three bottles again, we then added that sugar water to top them up. We had a little taste test while it was still warm like this and it was nice, but everyone knows you need limoncello to be frozen. So we put it in the freezer. So we got some frosty shot glasses from the freezer. I do think that chilling the shot glasses and especially freezing the limoncello is a really important step because it really tasted so much better once it had been in the freezer for a while and was really frosty cold. One thing I observed is that our limoncello didn't seem to be as cloudy and that creamyish colour that normal limoncello seems to have. I thought that ours looked a little bit clear. And this is where that alcohol comes in because when I researched it, I found that it's because we didn't have strong enough alcohol that we were soaking the lemons in that it wasn't able to extract as much of the lemon stuff. And so it would have been cloudier if we'd have done that. The next day though, I realized another fail and that was discovering that limoncello had completely frozen. And I think this is another thing about the alcohol content. You know, it did melt quite quickly and it was nice as it melted because it was still so cold. But this is just another reason why I definitely will be doing it with 50% alcohol next time. 
But what I have noticed is that over the next few days, as we kept this in the freezer and kept drinking it, uh, it did seem to get cloudier over time. So that's something to consider. So let's recap on what I will be doing next time I make limoncello. I will get a wide mouth jar. I will peel the lemons. I will soak them in 50% alcohol for two weeks. I will use that sugar water mixture to add into it and then I will serve it freezing cold in a freezing cold shot glass. I don't know if I'll ever bother buying limoncello ever again. It's just so easy and so good and tastes exactly like the limoncello you get in Italy. So while I enjoy my homemade limoncello, I'm going to be dreaming about holidays in the past and also in the future in the beautiful Italy.